Hey, welcome back to The Marianne Hickman Show. Today, I get to introduce you to one of my best friends, Diana. She is an incredible woman, and she's got an incredible message about coaching. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but you've probably seen coaching on the rise. And that's great. That's all well and good. We all want to learn from each other, and coaching is an incredible industry. But the last thing you want is coaches who don't have any experience or legitimacy or any business calling themselves coaches. I don't want to have someone that's 18 year old with zero life experience teaching me how to do my life. They're, they have no business being a life coach. They just haven't experienced enough lifetime yet. So Diana talks about how to get certified as a coach, the difference between coach, trainer, and mentor. I think you're really going to like it. So if you're thinking about getting on stage, make sure you pay attention to this episode. Check it out. So oh, you were saying... Yeah, no, it, it definitely makes me feel at home when I go into somebody's house and it's like, you know, there's kid stuff all over the place and, you know, like you said, diapers all over. I'm like, okay, whew, this is great. They don't feel like they have to clean up for me. I feel right at home. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Welcome just to my mess. Yeah. Yes. We, we try it. and keep like at least a rotation of diaper cleaning out happening every, once a week, 24 hours, you know. We're yeah. Really half of it. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh my gosh, yeah. Just like being a mom and an entrepreneur. <laughs> mm hmm Oh. And so here, I interviewed a, a guy by the name of Chad Brown. You would love him. Mm. If, you, if you're looking around on a podcast to be on, go check his okay. out. Because he is... Chad Brown, shoot me his name out. So after. good. He asks these really compelling questions, and he pushes back on your opinion and kind of stress tests it. And be like, do you really believe that? I love that. It's really cool. I love that. And his whole premise, and he even got it tattooed on his hand, this ampersand tattooed on his, his um, ring finger, to say mm. that you can have a business and a family. I love that. Right? And I thought that was such a cool thing. You're yeah. gonna yeah, it's just and you can yeah. have it all, not one or the other. Right. And you can and I know that you you also post a lot about that too, because you have plenty of kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good word. I'm like We're done. <laughs> Six. How we does, got everybody. How does Miriam do that? <laughs> it's uh it's like you can have it all, but all the little details just have to kind of go by the wayside, and that's what I've learned. <laughs> well, it's just a priority thing, you know? Totally. It's just it's if someone's going to come over to my house and be offended that there's like a, a diaper on the floor because I just changed it and my hands were full of yeah. a crank baby and they think that's a big issue, I'm like, you're just not my people. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> well, and obviously, like I was texting you this morning, I'm like, oh, well, I didn't get much sleep last night because I have a five month old and yeah, you look <laughs> incredible, and by so, the way. How are you feeling? You. Um, actually really good for the most part. Yeah. Um, it's the nights that I don't get sleep. Sometimes that's inconsistent. Yeah. And... And I think there's inconsistency when it's like uh, you, you're working, so you're out of the home. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll speak for myself. I'm working. I'm out of the home some of the time. And so I can't always enforce all the routines. And so things get out of whack. And so things don't always work the way that I want. I don't always get the sleep I want, you know? So, um, but it's, I think it's really cool to get to experience life this way. And I am feeling really good. Good. You As look like you're feeling good. Thank you. Especially, um, better than after having my first that was a whirlwind oh, man. So, yeah <laughs> that there's so much in that side <laughs> yeah oh my mom no yeah <laughs> but it's so good it's it's cool to get to experience the sometimes chaos of what my life is right now and like the the beauty the messiness the just like pure joy like there's it's it's full yeah. it's a full life it's nice yeah i like that description yeah. I wanted to dive into what you're up to right now because when we wrote your book, we were all about coaching and certification yes. and coaching. And I was like, yeah. Hey, what's up? Marianne Hickman here. Listen, I'm interrupting my own show because I want to give you something. Now, you guys all want to get on more stages. I got a free resource for you of stages that are just clamoring for guests. They need guests on a daily, weekly, sometimes monthly basis. This is my podcast database. Now, what I'm going to do is have you go to MarianneHickman.com forward slash database. Once you put in your information there, I'm going to send this to you totally for free. Open up this database. You're going to click through it, find the next podcast that's relevant to your topic, hit the application button, show up on their podcast, get in front of their people and share your content. Remember MarianneHickman.com forward slash database. Let's get you unlocked. I need to have Diane on the show because yes. there's, oh, if there's one thing that drives me crazy, it's, it's like this two sides of the same coin. It's when people that have no life experience, mm -hmm. say that they're coaches and they have no validity in saying so and they can't yeah. produce results for people and they're total hypocrites. And then on the other side of the same yeah. point, you have these people that are fantastic 
at what they do. Yeah. They have been in the industry for, you know, whatever industry, for 20 years. They have Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours completed, and yeah. yet they're like, I can't coach anybody. I don't I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to smack them. Yeah. Look, but <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about the, the yeah. coaching term, especially with what's been mm -hmm. um, passed recently in legislature and all of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is one of the things where like, I'm so passionate about um, what it means to be a coach in the coaching industry, because just like you explained, there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of different things going on, a lot of different types of people calling themselves coaches, and it kind of muddies the water and the term coach. And so what, um, what I'm doing right now, so we, we have a program where we're certifying coaches and we're actually doing that based on the ICF core competencies. And so what we define ICF yes, for anyone that doesn't um, know, the international coaching federation, so right? So it's the monocle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's the governing body of the coaching industry. And that's where I'm like, you know what, if you're going to be a coach, if you're going to call yourself a coach have like I want coaches to have something that backs them mm -hmm. we've also seen a lot of um, unethical things happening in the coaching world and um, just again a lot of things kind of being muddied sometimes the term coach gets bastardized because of all these things happening and so I wanted to take it back to the professionalism the um, accreditation so we are accredited with the International Coaching Federation because that was really important for me um, and so what you're referring to is, uh, with the legislation is the state of Utah decided, um, to, uh, pass this bill that they want those that are, um, calling themselves a life coach to be registered with the state. And I'm actually glad that, that, that they're catching on to this. And I hope that other states will follow suit because what they're seeing is just what I explained. There's all these different things happening. And, and some of it started with, um, the, the, Ruby, Frankie, and Jody Hildebrandt case, and I don't know how, if we want to go into that at oh, all. Oh, boy. That special is coming <laughs> out soon. There's so there's much happening. So, yeah. There's so much with that, and I think that kind of um, shine a light on the coaching industry and all of these different types of individuals that are calling themselves a coach, and that's why the state of Utah is taking action to say, we want to make sure that because coaching is not one of those um, professions that has to be registered with a licensing board, that at least they're registered with the state of Utah. There's criteria that they have to pass. They have to pass a background check. You know, all these these little things they have to um, signify what um, what training and experience they have. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually something that I think is uh, growing uh, nationwide and worldwide, where um, coaching is becoming more and more professional. We're starting to see it moving in the direction of. Uh, you know, even mental health companies, there are a, a lot of uh, corporations that are utilizing coaching as an employee benefit. And this is so cool. And you have to have the right type of training in order to take advantage of that. So there's a lot going on in that world. And, and I have a kind of two opinions about it. One, I really love that there is, it seems like the intention of the, the bill that was passed mm -hmm. is to eliminate fraud. Yeah. And that I will back 100%. Rich and I were just talking yesterday about how, for some reason, uh, Utah has this perfect storm of the socio-religious culture and the affinity fraud that creates this uh, over, over-trusting environment, which is yeah. really tragic because I like to think of the best of people. I like to see that they put their best foot forward, but people take advantage of that. There's, yeah. you know, two sides to every coin. So on the one hand, I, I appreciate it mm -hmm. that there's there's now an ISO standard, if you will. It's not strictly ISO, but yeah, totally, yeah. You know, you, even in the photography world, you know what that like it references. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but on the other hand, I'm like, okay, so I have a bunch of students that have expertise that are like, oh great, <sighs> now I have to go get another piece of paper from another institution that says that I'm smart and I just want to help people. Is there a balance to that? Definitely, and and here's here's what um, here's what it what it really means is like calling what it is you do by the right term because mm -hmm. I think in this industry we've used the terms like coaching and mentoring and consulting sometimes interchangeably, and so when you are you know calling yourself a coach, a life coach, you know whatever your title is really looking at does this align with for me it's the icf standards does this align with the icf definition of coaching and if not 
that's okay. You might just be a mentor. You might yeah. be a consultant. And and therefore, absolutely, still operate your business and operate under that title, you know, that, that you do life mentorship or you do, you know, whatever it is, business mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's really about like the terms and then how to look at, um, you know, the qualification for what it is you're doing. And sometimes that is just, I got success in this area, so I'm helping others get success. And that's great. That's a mentor. Right. Awesome. So there's lots of terms. I help me outline these for the sake of everyone. Totally. Yeah. We've got mentor, we've got coach, we've got trainer, yeah. uh, and a couple of other ones. What, yes. what does the, each of those mean? Yeah. So a coach uh, by the ICF standards is like, you are a thought partner with someone. You're on the same playing field and you are helping them to kind of self discover. You're helping them find their answers. You're helping them get to these points of discovery to be able to work through their problems. So it's basically like you're coaching the person who is seeing this as a problem versus coaching around the problem itself. If that makes sense, you are, you're looking at the person internally. You're looking at their thought uh, processes, their emotional patterns, the, the, the way that they view life so that when they now try on different lenses, they're now seeing different perspectives in these different areas of their life. That sounds a lot like how I would have described a therapist in the past. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't describe it that way now. Totally. I, I have not been um, enamored with the therapist world for quite some time because of what I've learned about mm. regulations and hidden agendas and sure. things they are legally and not legally able to say. And for, for yeah. me, like, if you're not, if you're bound by the state to not say something as a therapist, you might not be in the best interest of your client. And that well, troubles me. And let me even say this too. Um, there, I've talked to a lot of therapists who feel, and, and I think therapy is, is a great, um, it's a great industry. And there are therapists that um, feel a little bit restricted. Yeah. And there have been a lot of therapists that have actually kind of taken a bit of a shift into more of the coaching world because okay, there can sense. be an overlap. So yeah. it's kind of like this, right? There's, there's a little bit of overlap because I worked with a, a mental health company um, that contracted both therapists and coaches. Mm -hmm. And through the triage process, they would determine which um, care that client would go to. Interesting. So there was a bit of overlap. So there, there is. Okay. It, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. I, I wonder what their deciding factor was. Like, do you need a coach or do you need a therapist? Um, it's actually the, the levels of stress and anxiety. So they would take like the GAD7, the PHQ9, um, which, you know, typically... Uh, done in the therapy world, right? And yeah. so they would do that, and we would they would um, determine based on their scores if it was a low to moderate um, stress and anxiety scores, they could go to coaches. If it was um, on the higher end, they would go to the therapists. And sometimes, you know, therapists can do uh, more like interventions yeah, and yeah. things like that. That's kind of a cool stuff. distinction, yeah. actually. With, with the problems that you're dealing with, what is your stress level in relation to those problems? I like that they take that apart. Yeah. Okay, so we've got yeah. coaches. We even touched yeah. on therapy for a little yeah, bit. Totally. Talk to me about mentors, trainers, yeah. and other definitions. Yeah, so it's cool. So um, a, a mentor, you know, is someone that like, okay, I've achieved a result in this area of my life, so I'm going to take you along that path so that you can get that result. It's like, I have this expertise. I've, you know, I've been there. I'm going to help you come to my level. So there is this power differential. Um, and it, and it's different than a coach because what's really cool is I can coach someone to achieve a result that I have not achieved because the coaching process is different. It's not that I am giving you these step by steps of how to achieve it because I've done it. It's we're now working through your blocks to achieving your result based on your agenda. Interesting. Okay, so I think this is becoming clear. So when I think about Michael Jordan's basketball coach, he probably can't play basketball yeah. as good as Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right? But he's his coach because he's helping Michael through whatever is in Michael's way. Right? Yes. But to Michael get to Jordan, Michael's potential, not the coach's yes. potential. Yes. 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 Okay, yeah. so it, but Michael Jordan could be my mentor. Yes. If I want to learn basketball. Yes. Right? Because Michael's been there. This is really an interesting thought because I have always, not always, but, you know, a very, it's come to my deduction, if you will, mm -hmm. that I would never hire a, a coach or a mentor, and I've used those inter interchangeably, yeah. that didn't have what I wanted to achieve yeah. or hadn't achieved. But what you're saying is that the expectations are different. If you're hiring yes. a mentor... Yes. Then they should be able to say, I've done this. I've been there. This mm -hmm. is how you, this is how I got there. You can do it too. And a coach says, 
I'm more of a stem cell of progress. I don't care where you want to go, yes. but I know what gets in people's way and I know how to extract that. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. fascinating. And I think that people um, should understand that distinction and, and hire both of those individuals and understand what it is you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, I, even as a coach, you're going to have a certain level of expertise and you're going to typically coach people in an area where you have some experience. Right, right. Even if their goal yeah. is the same as yours, yeah. the, the mind matter yes. you have conquered as a so, coach. Yeah, so for example, like if, if uh, you're coaching people around their relationships because that's what you're, you've got experience in, that's what you're used to, typically you, you are going to see patterns that hold people back from having the relationship that they want. So some mm -hmm. of them are like, their communication patterns, their, um, you know, their, their thinking traps and things like that. And so those are things that now you're kind of tuned into your key into you've seen these patterns over and over and you can more easily help them through that. And sometimes you are giving some, um, I don't know if I'd want to say advice, um, counsel, maybe I don't yeah. know. like you're, you're giving some information, you're giving some them some practices or giving them some things to do because you know that those things work for people in those situations. Interesting. Okay. So is there, is trainer a different interchangeable or is that a whole different sub definition? Um, yeah. So totally different, um, title because now, so I, I think of it like we, so we have our lead facilitator who trains our, uh, our program who right. trains the coaches. Right. And, and I, I look at it in the way where, you know, in one context, he's doing a demo where he's coaching someone and he's just straight up a coach. But when he's in front of the room and he's teaching the concepts, now he's, he's teaching them, he's answering questions, he's teaching them based on his expertise. Mm -hmm. And so it really is, it's, it's, you know, training somebody on, you know, a topic that you have experience training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is really fascinating because I, a lot of the students that I work with, they have, like I said, their level of expertise. I generally don't work with people who don't aren't, aren't good at something, <laughs> right? Like they're really hard to find. Right, yeah. But I love yeah. what you're saying about you know the understanding these terms, mm -hmm. uh, protecting yourself as a consumer, right? Yeah. And yes. saying what should I be looking for and what are the expectations? I think also understanding what you're buying. You know what what yes. am I? What, what does the fine print say? You know as yes. far as yeah. what do I get? Are is your coach promising a result? Uh, right. I don't think they ever should, in right. my opinion, because right. you can't control them, exactly. you know? Uh, so this is really interesting. So let, I want to pivot a little bit because yeah. one of the things that we did a few years ago was so fun. And I want are you still in touch with, um, what is her name? Oh, my Dora. Dora? Yeah, I was giving the Dora face, thinking of Dora's name. Dora. Dora and yes. Diego, we which are so yes. cute. How the hell are they? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I touch base with her here and there. Um, but yeah, no good. Yes. I'm still in, in touch with her. She's, she's amazing. She's one of, you know, my, my people, yeah, my people. Yeah. She's a super connector. I love her. Um, yeah, she's doing good. Good. At Are you still doing those events? No, not currently. I mean, life got crazy once yeah. I became a mom. Yeah. Yeah. And right after becoming a mom is when we launched this business. And yeah. so I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to, Kind of put, you know, push pause on a few things. Oh, priority shift. Yeah. Well, I want, to, I want to talk about these events. Are you going to go back into events, do you think, with your business growing? And Well, yeah. I mean, we'll probably be doing a variety of things. Yeah. So right now it's, I'm, yeah, kind of all over the place. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. That's yes, kind of well, definitely we do. Right? We wear a million hats. Yes. So what, yeah. what was the things that you learned while you were doing events? Yeah. The, the things you would repeat and the things you would never do again. Yeah. So things that I learned... Well, well, can I start with this? I, I learned a lot that sent me into the trajectory that I'm on now. Yeah. And what I learned about myself, I'll start there, is that I, like, I am a master orchestrator. Mm. And I saw how things came together very seamlessly. And I sat there and I looked at it like, okay, I, I don't think that this project is my project. I think almost like there's this like divine aspect of the things that I've created because people would come into my life. People would come together so seamlessly, the people that I needed. And I think that helped me to really, I guess I'll say like trust the universe. Yeah. Um, and launch me into an even bigger project. Um, so that's, that's some of what I learned. And then your, your question was, what would you, what would you never do again? Like, oh. what was one of the ooh, cringy things that like, I, that's not going well. And 
a, you know, buy a five kind of a moment. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, there's probably, if I thought hard enough, there's probably a lot of things. I think that's what, I think that's what entrepreneurship is about is like finding those things where it's like, oh man, that was a, I wouldn't say mistake, but you know what I mean? Like like that, that was a bit, that was a failure. <laughs> uh, oh, hmm. I, I don't know specifically when it comes to events, um, what I can think of, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's lots of details. <laughs> oh yeah. I, well, and I think to your point of what you did really well was bringing in the right people and you avoided yeah. a lot because you brought on the right people and you didn't bring on the wrong yeah. people. Yeah. There's this book, who we don't have, I'm sure you've read it. I've right. at least heard of the concept yeah. and I've read, you know, some of the other books. And... I, I don't read them cover to cover. Yeah, yeah, I gotta right. be honest. I, this yeah. bookshelf is full of books. And as soon as I find something useful, I close yes. the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, I totally get the concept. I'm done. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to be this kind of person. It's the warrior inside of me. I was like, if I yeah. didn't finish the book, I didn't really read the book. And then it's like this, like school, I don't know, oh, this interesting. stupid training inside of me. But it took me okay. until I was like out of junior high to feel safe using a highlighter in a book that I owned. Oh, Ooh, I was so collegiate. Yeah, that academic. took that. I, I, I know that feeling. Yes, exactly. I get it. I get it. Anyway, but these, the, the events that you put on, I love the women's event that you put together. The energy in the room was just electric. Mm. Are, are people still, you know, are you still gathering people? Are they still following you? Did you transition the audience into this new thing? Not, not 100%. Uh -huh. um, but it, yes, in some ways, like I'm, I just, I'm kind of like a collector of, of people. Yeah. So it's like, if I know people in one context, I'm like, oh, come with me and, you know, let's do this other thing. And so I think that really has translated a lot. Um, but with that as well, I started to learn my power in, just like you said, bringing in the right people, mm -hmm. because I have this way of attracting people into, like enrolling people into my vision. You are so expert at that. And I did not realize what a strength that was. Yeah. And so, you know, I did that with Ladies in Action. And then also once, once I started this business, um, <sighs> at Elevated Coaching Academy, I was able to find the right team members, to attract the right team members. And I was seriously like, almost shocked <laughs> with the ability of the type of person, the quality of person, the experience of the people that I was drawing together, especially where I'm like, I have no experience in this. <laughs> this is the first time that I'm doing something like this. Yeah. Yet we have an expert team. Yeah. And so what I learned about myself as an entrepreneur is that I am typically now going to be the least experienced, least qualified person, but my strength is orchestrating mm -hmm. the right team, the right people. And now I just crave like bringing together people that are better than I am in a lot of these areas. You're the Henry Ford yes. of this whole thing. You're like, I don't know how to build a car, but I have yes. people to do. That's exactly. so brilliant. That's so uncommon in, on, in entrepreneurship. I think the most common thing that I have seen in entrepreneurship, and I've committed this sin horribly, mm -hmm. is getting into wearing all of the hats yeah. so that you are this micromanaging control freak, at least, again, speaking to myself oh, here, yes. of, of I could do this better, I could do this better, I could do this better. And I'm still trying to learn to peel off those hats of yeah. done is better than perfect. Yes. So I got, I also, <laughs> I got to be a master at delegation because I launched this business right after I had my first baby, my, my mental clarity, my mental health, like everything was all over the place. And yeah, I, I couldn't, out of yeah, yeah. Like, and I couldn't do it. So I'm like, you know what? I know that this is not going to be reliant on me and I can't build it to be reliant on me. And so I did become really good at delegating. And actually, even as we're talking about this, um, something that Dora said uh, <laughs> comes into my mind because even as we were putting together one of our Ladies in Action events, she goes, you know, Diana's motto is why do something yourself that you could get somebody else to do for you? And yeah. I'm like, that is, that is my <laughs> motto. I am so good at being the visionary and then just delegating and being like, here, let's, you know, do this together. I'm enrolling you in my yeah. vision. And it just it's been so fulfilling to see stuff like that come together. Well, oh, let me be just super raw because one of my fears is that one is I will get the wrong people because I've done that. I've made that mm, mistake. Yeah. So maybe there's a breakthrough in order for me there. Totally. But another one of my fears is that I might get the right person, mm. but I never want them to feel taken advantage of. Mm. And it comes from having been that person who, you know, when I, when I was in the moment, I didn't feel taken advantage of, but when I look back, I'm like, I never want to treat someone that way. And I don't want to make that mistake. And, and it, I mean, how do, how do you battle that? Maybe you don't, you don't even encounter that, but I would feel like 
especially as an entrepreneur when you don't have yeah. the payroll to do something like that you know and, mm. and you're just enrolling people in your vision you're like gosh that's all cool together i hope this works <laughs> Right? You know, it's a, it's a good question because even as you're, as you're like, well, yeah, as an entrepreneur, you don't have the payroll to do it. Totally. I remember talking to people where I'm like, I don't know how we're going to pay you, yeah. but I know that I want you and let's just keep you excited enough to figure it out together. Yeah. You know, and I think what I experienced was the vulnerability in, um, maybe it's a little bit different than what you described, but the vulnerability in bringing on team members that were so experienced and, um, you know, knowledgeable and just better than me in almost every way, you know? Yeah. And and that vulnerability and being like, how can I ask them to come into this product? Like, how can I hire these people right. that ultimately I'm supposed to be the leader of that I don't know anything? And then I learned the just massive support that people have when you are so clear on your vision mm -hmm. and you know where you're going and people fall in line because of what I realize is my strengths are different than others and those others are looking for the piece of the puzzle that I have and I'm looking for the piece of the puzzle that they are and it just I've seen these things come together so seamlessly and I realized where I thought I was going to get a lot of criticism was where I got the most overwhelming support and I was mm -hmm. so shocked and sometimes as an entrepreneur where you think you're going to get support isn't and so yeah. I think that's the challenge too is being vulnerable enough to put something out there and say look I'm doing this for the first time and I need amazing people and to just kind of go for it, it was so vulnerable for me when I first um, was starting to bring on our couple of team members because I'm like they are gonna think I'm crazy that I am trying to build this and I'm asking them to be a part of this project I'm wanting to hire them and it, it I got totally the opposite response it was like, oh my gosh, I would love to help you. And I know this other person. Would you like, would you like a connection? Do you need a trainer? And, and you know, we just started getting our, our team that way. And I'm like, it's not that I know everything. It's who I am that's going to attract the right people. And that's what I need to remember. That's so important that you said that. I, I was just talking about uh, on a, a, the training some kind I was doing. I was talking about Ty Lopez. And they just posted, I'd say just, it was a while ago, but yeah. he posted on Instagram that we've really seen three waves of industry in the last hundred years. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen it, the a, uh, assembly line, what do they call it, industrial, industrial oh, revolution. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then we saw in the 1950s and 60s, the golden age and rise of the corporations, the high rise buildings, all of these things. And now we're seeing the third wave, which is the rise of the individual. And yeah. it's just what you're saying is people work with you because they love you. Yeah. And they, they get behind your mission. Pace Morby also put it this way. He said, he had an employee come up to him and the employee said, thank you for dreaming big enough that my dreams fit inside yours. And I, that was like, I want that to be <sighs> the feeling of everyone that I work with. I want to dream so big mm -hmm. that the excitement yes. is, is there and like everything that they want to do to do in life is, is possible in the world that I'm creating. Yes. That's how big I want to go. Yes. Like that's, and, well, and, and like having that, that shared vision, like bringing in people whose vision aligns with yours and where you're like growing it together because we don't accomplish these big visions by ourselves. It's always with a team. Yeah. It's always with other people. And sometimes we're just the leader of our vision, but it's the other people that are bringing it about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, I think for me, let's hear you say that there's, there's some work I get to do in saying, what, how am I stopping them? Because I think they're trying to run to me, but I'm, I'm blocking it somehow. You know, and how can I get through? How can I overcome that block? Yeah. It makes me think of there's this story in the Bible that, um, gosh, like Richard, I can't remember which prophet this was. It was all the prophet that was like riding on his donkey and kept crashing him into things. Do you remember? I don't remember so it, this is <laughs> this is a principle that like sneaks into my head every once in a while because. The, this guy is like riding his donkey and keeps smashing him into things and the donkey oh. like it, it, the scriptures say it as the the burden was lifted from the donkey and the donkey turned around and spoke english to this guy and like stop being a moron you're crashing into stuff right oh, yeah. and so when i think of that it's less about us talking donkey and more right. about anything that we want is already trying to get to us we don't have to chase it it's trying to get to us and if it's not to us we just have to remove the dam yes. that's in the way yeah. And so what you're saying is making me go through all that thought process. Yes. And, and the way that I've also seen it too with, um, you know, kind of what I said before, like there's sometimes I think about it in this divine aspect sometimes. Um, a lot of times it's like the, I feel like sometimes the vision chose me mm -hmm. and it's like, 
oh, how did I get here? I just kind of woke up one day and I was moving in this direction because the vision chose me. Therefore, it's something that needs to happen. And so sometimes that's how I think about it is yeah. like, it needs to happen and I'm the one that gets to lead that, that gets to kind of take it there. And Qualified. it's just kind of a cool, yeah. It's a, it's just kind of a cool perspective. Yeah. I like it. I, I kind of, I've thought about that a lot as, um, as coaches and entrepreneurship, especially. Yeah. Because uh, I, and I listened to a lot of Alex and Rosie. I've got a couple of his books right there. Oh, yeah. Um, and I agree with him on a lot of things. I disagree with him on some things. And I think he and Layla are going to start speaking a little bit different to have babies more. <laughs> <laughs> Your 14 hour work day might change, my brother. Right. Uh, yeah. But he, he talks a lot about, um, what success looks like. And this is where I agree. Mm -hmm. And, and he says the successful are successful because they just keep going. Well, 98% yeah. of other people just give up. They just yeah. stop and it sucks. Yeah. And in the, the persistence of greatness is where greatness is achieved. Yeah. I just made that up. You can have that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that. Well, and that's what my husband keeps telling me too. He's like, well, you're not a failure if you just keep going. Yeah. You know, because there's, there's times any entrepreneur is just like, okay, is this worth it? Like weighing Yeah, that especially out. when the payroll is not yeah. there and, and, right. and the, the, it yeah. all comes down to the wire and you're faced with, do I continue or do I put out a resume? Like, yes, bleh. right. You know, like there's, there's nobody yeah. coming. And the yes. only reason you can put out that resume is because some other entrepreneur might work. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what I always have to think of, you know, it's like, okay. You can't, yeah, you can't fail if you just keep moving. Yeah. You just keep moving. And of course there's going to be failures along the way, but I, I reframe those failures as successes because it's like, oh, that was really cool that I got to learn that. And all of these failures are going to be, make really good stories, mm -hmm. you know, in a stage presentation, a training, whatever. Right. So it's like, oh, these are great. I'm going to take these failures and I'm going to tell those stories one day. So tell me about your stages. I, I love hearing about times that you've spoken on stage. I've I haven't been able to mm. listen to you from stage because you've just not been on with the baby and that's totally fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, take more of your all time. All over the place. Yes. <laughs> but I, the way that you communicate yeah. with people, not just in your business and industry, but you also do that well when I see you speak. Mm. And, and it's so personable and it is so connective. I've seen a lot of speakers that get up on stage and they disconnect from the audience, be either because it's mm. pedestal syndrome yeah. or you know they get stage fright or whatever. Tell me about your favorite stage experience. I think that once I, um, you know what? I, I think that one of my favorites is the moment that I got on stage and I stopped feeling nervous about it because that that's one of the things too. This, this imposter syndrome, I think really set in, um, even in the beginning of, of us doing ladies in action, I'm like, well, who am I to do this? And looking back, I'm like, why did I have to be any, <laughs> any question? qualified to like gather women together. I, I don't know why. You don't need a coaching certificate for that. Right? Like, like, <laughs> why do I need to be qualified to like, to have a gathering, like come to this, you know? So, yeah. but, but I had some really, really harsh like beliefs that I really worked to break through. And every time I got on stage, I was just so nervous, so nauseous, like, oh my gosh, I'm just not, I'm not qualified for this. But then there was one event that we did and I got on stage and um, all of those nerves drained from me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could stand up here and totally just love it. I can work with the audience. I'm not nervous of what they throw my way. I know how to get them to respond in a way that I want. So I started being more playful and it wasn't, it wasn't like a huge experience. The, the huge experience was internally when I'm like, that was incredible. I didn't feel like those nerves were gone. And I think from that point was when I could really get up and really connect with the audience and make it, you know, like you're saying, not being in my head, make it more about what is it that you guys need? What can I provide? And so ever since then, I'm like, I, I'm trying to collaborate as much as I can with any event producer where I'm speaking. I'm like, what does your audience need? What do you guys need? What can I do to edify you? What can I do to really add value to your audience? Like where are they at in their lives? I just want to help as much as I can, but I have to know where they're at, get inside their minds so that I can do that. And I also have to put together a presentation where I could be willing to pivot. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're really good at that. <laughs> and this is why I also, I'm such a big fan of yours because I, I notice what you do 
with an audience. I know it's what you do on stage. I know that you are there for them. And I take note of everything that you do on stage. Oh, I mess up sometimes. Don't take notes of that. <laughs> well, first, here, but here's what it is. It's not even about what you say. It's about how you connect and how you make everybody feel and how you make them perk up and tune in and listen. And those are the things that I take note of. And I, I just, I love it. What do you think? So I was talking, I was on a podcast just yesterday and uh, it is the number one fear in the world. And they asked me about this. Stage fright, public speaking is the yeah. number one fear. And I think death moved down to like number four. Mm. It's like public speaking and spiders and then yeah. something else and then yeah. maybe taxes or something yeah. and then death, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, why do you think that is? Well, our minds are telling us that it's dangerous because when we're so primed to be part of a tribe and we need to fit in for survival. So when we are, when we're called out and the spotlight's on us, it's like, ooh, this is scary. Because if I'm ostracized, that's not good for survival. And so, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, I need to get in there with the group, right? I need to blend in. And that's what our... Because there's a tiger outside and he might get me by myself. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I remember when I first started kind of this you know, like speaking in front of people and uh, my father-in-law asked me, he's like, how can you do that? Like, how can you get up in front of people? He's like, isn't that just like terrifying? And I said, yes. And my vision and my desire for what I'm creating is greater than the fear. And it has to be if I'm going to do what I'm doing, because you do like at, when you're in that position, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're trying to create something big, you are operating in this like fear. <laughs> There's you know, you have to operate with courage, but the, the vision and the desire has to be greater in order to keep moving. I, I've watched that movie Twisters. Have you seen that yet? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. It is everything you'd hope for that movie to be. Like throw back to the first movie. It's got the <laughs> corny cowboys in the background. It, yeah. it does not disappoint. Just if you, if you know what we're walking okay. into. Anyway, okay. um, if you have high expectations for like a, you know, red carpet <laughs> movie, don't go to that. Okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's good for what it is anyway so but one thing he said in there uh who was the star who was the like the cowboy on the face of the t-shirt do you remember that? someone in the comments tell me because i clearly can't remember it's like either it's Mel gibson or everybody else <laughs> like the only hollywood actor i know regardless what he said was we don't run from fear we write it we don't run from fear so we write it yeah and i was like damn yes. i like that and it made me think of every yes. hero's journey that i've ever witnessed every story that's ever been told in a movie i think yeah. the dune riders riding their giant worms like we we just write it and and but we tame that fear we make it our bitch and it's like yes, you know that's like right. that's that's when i met my it's best like, is is yes like i'm not making decisions based on you but let's go right you know right like almost in spite of like it doesn't go away it's not yeah. like because then once you get to that point where it's like oh now this is my new comfort zone now you go for that next level. Now you're uncomfortable again. Now there are all those fears. You know, it's just that greater level of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. I love that you talked about the, the difference between having stage fright and being nervous. And your nerves run away the moment you pivoted mm -hmm. to how can I show up for them. Yeah. That's yeah. such a big, like, transition. And it doesn't take a long time. It happened in a moment after yeah. you know, years of being on stage. Yeah. But, so tell me what's next with your business. What's your next big thing? What's your next big dream? And how are you tackling it? Ooh, okay. Next, I don't know, because I see like the whole vision and then I'm, I am working on piecing down like what are our next steps? So right now we are, we are growing our coach training company. Um, and I'll just, I guess I'll kind of tell you like my vision as a whole, because what, what I really want to do is, is have, you know, one of the largest coach training hubs in the country. Um, because it's, I want to plug in all of the coaching resources I want to be able to connect clients with coaches. I want to be able to help coaches be successful. I want to, um, you know, have connections with all of the opportunities, um, including companies that are hiring coaches and everything. Like I just want to be the connecting point, mm. um, not just a coach training company, but a, a coaching and a coach training hub. Yeah. So that, that's, that's cool. kind of the big vision. Yeah. That's kind of what, what I set out with in the very beginning is, it's going to be a whole hub. I'm just going to collect people and resources and other companies that can plug into us so that we can just connect everything. I think that's one of the biggest disconnects in the industry is that uh, coaches will, you know, go through training and then they're like, well, now what? 
oh, now I have to start a business. Some of them don't want to start a business. Some of them are entrepreneurial. Some, you know, and, and now it's like, okay, now I have to figure all of this out. What opportunities are there? How do I get clients? And then sometimes they do go back to a job. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we want them to be able to be successful and to launch a successful coaching business and to plug into all the opportunities. Um, so that's, you know, that, that's kind of the, the big vision. And right now we're just looking for collaborators. We're building out a, a subscription model so that we can actually help, um, the coaches mm -hmm. get their clients and be successful and market themselves. So that's kind of the next stage because we've got our, our curriculum, we've got our program. It's great. It's accredited. Um, and so that's the next the next step for us is really helping the coaches build their business. That sounds like everything that college was supposed to be, you know, the hub for <laughs> yeah. people to come learn what they want and people to teach yeah. what they're good at. And yeah. that's been bastardized as well. But yeah. I, I love what you're doing that. Is that like based in an app or is it based in events or is it based in a, a um, It's going to be like on our, our um, LMS platform. We're starting to build that out. We're going to be piloting it and then kind of see where we want to go from there because yeah. we might pivot strategies. We're going to have, um, uh, monthly trainings and masterminds as well as video content to help them, you know, start marketing yeah. themselves. Well, count me in. I'm good. Cool. Uh, I'm 100% I'm good. behind your cause and I have yes. all of my students that I can teach and oh, gosh, yes. I have the coolest people in this universe. Like I've got vocal students, I've got finance oh, yes. students, I've got, they, I don't have their expertise, but I can teach them how to build yes. a business and if I can connect them to more people, Absolutely. even yes. better. And, and the, the thing that I love again about what you're doing is that there's this abundance mindset. You're not threatened by people marketing themselves. No, that, no. I mean, that's so uncommon yeah. in this world. Yeah, I really do. Like I, I have more of a collaborative mindset. I want to bring in collaborators into the business and I want um, those businesses to make money while we make money. I want to help our students become really successful and market themselves. I just... You know, I, the, the vision that I have with this business is so much bigger than me. I mean, it's not going to, I'm not going to be the one to bring the whole thing to fruition. So I just have to be really open in yeah. however that works. Well, I'm excited to watch it unfold. How do people Thank find you? you? If they want to be part of this, a part of your journey and yeah. watch this or be a, a coach or get certified, how do they find you? Elevatedcoachingacademy.com. Just jump on our website. Um, follow me on Instagram, Diana G. Beck. <laughs> We'll put it in the show notes yeah. there for you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much oh, for being here. This is always you. a blast. <laughs> but I'm one of your biggest fans. So thank oh you my for gosh. having me. <laughs> I love what you're doing. So guys, yeah. make sure you check out all everything that Diane's doing, especially if you're in the coaching world. A lot of you are taking the stage as speakers. See if what she's doing might be able to boost your business and help you find the right people. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hey, what's up? Marianne Hickman here. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed that episode. We have some pretty amazing speakers on my podcast and, of course, more to come. If this is something that you enjoyed, guys, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. You guys know what to do. I love your comments and I respond to every single one of them personally, not a bot or an agency. So. If this is something you're enjoying, tell me about it. Tell me your gold nuggets. I want to hear from you. But here's the most important thing I want you to laser in on. I told you about the podcast database. You've probably seen me post about it all over social media. I want to make sure that you get it. So here's what I want you to do. Go to MarianneHickman.com forward slash database. Once you put all of your information in there, I'm going to send you the document. You request access to it. Boom, it's unlocked. Once you're in there, my rule of thumb is to apply to 10 podcasts a month. It's very digestible. It's very easy to do. And the database gets updated twice a week. So I want you constantly checking back in there for the next podcast that fits your audience. Thank you for being here. Much love to you. And we'll see you in the next episode.